Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cranberry Horn. I'm Bethany, and this is the inaugural podcast for Cranberry Horn, where we'll be talking about everything that's going on in my life and why I felt the need to turn this into a podcast. I hope you'll join me. I'm going to be talking about books, and I'm going to be talking about life, and I'm going to be talking about some knitting. So if you'd like to join us, uh, I would be glad to have you along for the journey. Um, Stay tuned. First off the bat, I want to apologize for the lighting. I have worked to try and figure out how to get that that lighting fixed, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to do it. Um, I will find it a way in the future, but for now, this is kind of what I'm stuck at. Uh, as you can see behind me, it's kind of a hodgepodge behind me. This is my current writing, knitting, project room. Uh, formerly known as my daughter's bedroom and so <laughs> most of the stuff that's still up here is still my daughter's stuff you know they move home but they move away but they don't take everything um, I've sort of added my own layer to everything on top of here uh, if you're familiar with cranberry horn I've done some some videos in the past talking about uh, issues that are important to me, some of them about my health, uh, some of them about things that were going on in the community. I've talked about some writing, um, and um, I'm going to be sort of boiling it all together to make this sort of a friendly podcast. I really like the format. I've been seeing it with a lot of other uh, people online and realized that I kind of like the enjoyable, easygoing, uh, not a lot of pressure on you to put uh, fancy content out there uh, into place. On Cranberry Horn, you're going to be seeing those parts of my life, probably more than more the, the life and the knitting and uh, budget. Probably we'll be talking about some budgeting things. Um, not so much about the writing. I think that that's probably going to be on... Um, Another thing, I'm a freelance editor, I'm a freelance writer. Uh, I've written four books and I've been writing for over 20 years. So that's another part of my life as well. But, um, and so that you'll see bits and pieces, especially if I get really excited about a book, you're probably gonna hear about that as well. So in the meantime, I'll start by telling you a little bit more about myself. Uh, I'm 52. I live in Maine, here on the coast. I'm not um, way up where all the snow is, but I'm sort of not all the way to the south either. I'm, I'm in the middle of there somewhere along the coastline. I grew up in a fishing community here in, in Maine, and um, I work for an energy company. My husband works for a large uh, outdoor retailer here in Maine, and if you've Heard of Maine, you probably know who I'm talking about, but I can't say the name, uh, so we'll leave that part out of it. <laughs> uh, as I said, uh, uh, among other things, I, I'm a mom, I have two grown kids, uh, my son is uh, on his way towards, he, he's just finished college, he's got his first full-time job, and uh, he is navigating that whole bit himself, and, and, and we're good at being a background for him. In the meantime, my husband and I have decided that after being in our house for almost, oh goodness, I think we've been in this house for 28 years, uh, being married for almost 30, that it's time that we were going to start looking at, at some of the things that we want to do with our life, and a lot of it doesn't have anything to do with living in a sticks and bricks. Uh, so you'll be seeing us sort of navigating towards moving away from the sticks and bricks and becoming, uh, hopefully, very soon, we will be uh, debt free and uh, on our way to living a lifestyle where it's more on the road, where we can see, we, we love to travel. Uh, we've always been avid travelers in all forms 
and uh, this will give us the opportunity. We, we decided that uh, we weren't, weren't, we weren't going to wait any much longer for that. Uh, we really wanted to do that now. In the meantime, uh, we will be probably in our sticks and bricks at least for another year, if not longer. Uh, it depends um, on how things go, and uh, but in, we are minimalizing the stuff that's around us. Uh, if you hear noises in the background, that's my dog. He is a half-naked border collie uh, who has massive allergies and has had massive allergies since I got him. So he and I both enjoy allergies uh, tablets. Uh, we have, let's see, how many cats? We have two indoor cats. One of them is my son's. He just got it. And one outdoor cat that uh, has adopted us. Oh, and there's a goldfish in there somewhere that's, my son's, it's really old. Uh, so that's what we have for animals around the house. You might occasionally see one of them. The evil cat is around here somewhere. <coughs> mm. Getting over that flu that everybody has had um, in the area, I know uh, I'm definitely not alone. In our office, we had large numbers of people who were out, including entire departments at one point, we're out with this and all I have left is that nagging tickly cough it does not want to seem to go away so I'm gonna try avoiding coughing on online <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about um, let's see what's today man well today I actually worked half a day and I got to go to my happy place. My happy place is, a, is a, <laughs> sounds a little strange. Um, it's a new addiction for me. <coughs> I apologize. Um, I had tried for years to learn how to knit and had never been successful at it. And then I every winter I make a new goal and something I want to learn because winters here in Maine can can last forever and ever. And if you don't have something to keep yourself determined, then you're probably going to, you know, go a little crazy. So um, I had decided that this year I was going to learn how to knit for sure. Uh, I was always, I was already a, an avid crochet, crocheter. I've been doing that for years off and on. So crocheting was, was uh, okay for me. But uh, this time I found YouTube as far as learning how to knit. And so I have started knitting. And uh, I am uh, becoming quickly enamored, if not obsessive about knitting. I yeah, found it extremely relaxing. So I do a lot of it uh, at night. When I get home, I'll do a lot of knitting. So my happy place is um, a shop in Freeport called Mother of Pearl. I'm going to show you this bag because I just got this today. Mother of Pearl in Freeport, Maine. If you're familiar with Freeport, they are down near Bucks, near Bucks, Bucks Naked Barbecue. They're down in that section. Um, they are wonderful. If you like yarn, if you like friendly people, I highly recommend it. This weekend they are having a large um, sorry about that. I want to take a moment to take some medicine so I didn't cough at you anymore. One of the things that I wanted to show about the bag is from, from Mother of Pearls. One that's got this fantastic mermaid on there, which is their logo. Uh, my mother was a fanatic about mermaids. She loved them. I think my sister is pretty big on them, too. Um, and it says, always be yourself, unless you can be a mermaid, then always be a mermaid. So there you go. So I happened to go in there just as they were having this uh, big visit from all these people. They're, they're doing what they call um, 
knit and spa, I think it's called this weekend. And uh, they've partnered up with a lot of businesses in the Freeport area uh, for to do, you know, a shopping, knitting, spa weekend that everybody can enjoy. <clears throat> and uh, I happened to get there just as there was a whole bunch of women in there uh, in the shop. And I, I walked in and, and she said, oh, are you here for the, I said, no, I'm a local. And, and they were all like, oh, local, local. You know? <laughs> so it's that kind of thing that makes that place my, my, uh, I want to run away someday to place. You know, you feel like it's your tribe, it's your place to go, you feel comfortable. I feel as comfortable in there as I do um, with people that I've known for, you know, 20, 30 years or whatever. So, it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna put the glasses on, the glasses are broken. Uh, so while I was in there, like I said, <clears throat> they had a whole bunch of women who were in there buying up all the stuff and like crazy and enjoying it. I picked up the bag. Um, I also got this new book and it's, I don't know if you can see it very well. It's from Barocco Knits and I missed, they had a trunk show last night, which I wish I had been there. <clears throat> this is based off of the Barocco Liana line, which is, um, I don't know if it says in here what the what the percentage is on it. Um, it is 81% linen, 19% nylon, 140 yards per 50 gram hank. It's machine wash in cold water on delicate cycle, lay flat to dry. So what I was excited about when I saw this was especially the picture on the cover. Um, and I will show you the picture on the back as well. <clears throat> there are some great patterns in here that I consider like a summer knits. Um, I work in an office that isn't always the best regulated for temperature. So, you know, you can start out the morning with a sweater on and end up in a tank top. Um, so something like this works really well. Um, I will be able to partner in and it'll look classic and I, I won't have to worry too much about it as long as I hand wash it. It, it should be fine. Um, the colors that they had of the Liana in, uh, in the store were, to me, darker than what I had expected. Um, this one here on the front was actually in the store and it was uh, wilder. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little wilder than what it actually knits up to. The They did have another one that they just got in, and it was not a Barocco. It was close to that, but it's the same sort of uh, message. The, a Barocco Leonis, uh, I was told, was um, somewhere between a DK and a fingerling. Fingering, not fingerling. Fingering. Uh, so you're, you're talking not a heavy worsted, maybe closer to a cottony, which is sort of what I'm looking for for summer. Something that would breathe well. This would do really well with that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at the back and realize there's a really cute little short sleeve jacket in here that would go nice over the tank top and make a nice sweater set. So yeah, so this I got there, um, and it's it's beautiful. The patterns seem to be very inclusive. There doesn't seem to be any problem with that. Um, they look like fun. I'm gonna see. I'm not sure what I'm, what color. I'd like to go with some summery colors. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. <clears throat> and frankly, I haven't finished what I have in front of me here. I haven't finished that yet, so I need to do that first. Um, what, what this this mass of whatever I have in front of me is um, Ho Ho Lagutelli's uh, boxy sweater, and uh, this is the first one that I've done, and I I really wanted to do it because it was uh, in the round. It's a very simple shape. 
uh, you'd have, if you go look at the pattern, the, the patterns are not that expensive. I think they're like $6 for the pattern, uh, but they're, they're worth it because they're well written. Uh, she gives uh, instructions if you wanted to do it as a piece together or if you want to do it as an in the round, you can do it either way with that. Um, it, in this case, I already had the yarn that I wanted, that I, I've had this yarn for quite a while, but I've bought more because, you know, that's what you do. Um, this is, <clears throat> Lion's Brand yarn in, in the jeans color, colorway, and it's the brand new color. And I fell in love with this because it looks, it looks just like a brand new pair of jeans. And I wanted a sweater that would be loose, that I could pull over with a tank top underneath it, and just go and it would be comfortable and still stylish and um it like i said i had the color <coughs> excuse me i had the color picked out before i had the sweater picked out and i've put that with a uh, um very hairy oatmeal tweed that has the same colors in it. And this is a Super Saver Red Heart uh, <laughs> Yeah, now I got cat and dog hair all over me. Um, and so this will make up, this is the yoke. So from this is about from here to the neckline is how far I've gotten on this part of the front here. And you'll see there's a brown stitch in between and that is actually the uh, what they call the top stitch color from the uh, Lions brand jeans color it's it's like if you look at a pair of jeans it's the little top stitching the on the pockets and stuff it's that color and I really like it, it looks almost like a fox it's it's kind of a reddish brown color so as I said um, The, the, the demarcation, there's about six inches from underneath here to here of this color that I decided, because I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to break it up. Uh, and then I did a line for continuity, the denim blue, down for the bottom of it. And then, then at the bottom, I have done a cuff with the oatmeal to tie it in. Uh, I haven't decided what the sleeves are probably going to be. They may be... Uh, the denim blue with just some coloring at the bottom it's it's made for a three-quarter sleeve and I'm probably gonna do them a little longer that because I'm not really a big fan of three-quarter sleeves um, but again it's it's a great pattern especially for those of us who are just starting out um, and it's uh, you know it's, it's, it's Hohe Locatelli so really let's face it if you've been around this for any length of time you've heard of that Hohe Locatelli so that is what I'm working on I'm, I'm at that point where I'm really excited I'm getting up to the top of it um, so that will <clears throat> hopefully be closer to finished by the end of this weekend um, the other, I'm not going to show the other sweater that I have on, on there right now, but that's it for projects. Um, I've been doing some projects out of the class Saltwater Classics book. <coughs> oh, excuse me again, Saltwater Classics book, and uh, that if you get a chance to see it, do so. It's a great book, not only from a writer's standpoint, I can tell you that it does everything it's supposed to do. Uh, it's got great, beautiful, colorful patterns in it. It has stories behind each one, and it gives you a real sense of where the patterns came from. So it hits every mark that's out there. Uh, I'll put a link down below if you want to take a look at that. Uh, it, it's, it's, so worth money. In fact, the company that publishes it, I think it's from Newfoundland. <coughs> the, 
the company that publishes it is in Canada and they have said that it is by far one of the best sellers they've ever had. Um, that the, the response has been phenomenal to it and uh, the two ladies that, that do this, they have a couple of books out um, along the same lines with the knitting that they are really uh, being warmly uh, accepted for this book that, that, that it's going well for them and, and I wish them a lot of luck that's great <clears throat> I'm going to see how far I was into it uh, let's see what else have I got going right now um, as I said I'm, I'm working I'm a freelance I've been a freelance editor for a while um, I just have never hung on a shingle or anything for it. So uh, I specialize in developmental edits of books. Um, that's sort of my thing after all these years. And um, mean, by meaning developmental, I mean that I, I, I specialize in being able to work with authors to get the book to where they want it to be. Uh, so, I mean, I can do copy edits, that's, you know, that's one thing, but this is a much more in-depth, line-by-line, okay, let's see what we can do, um, to bring this up. And it's not that any writing is bad, it's that sometimes it's easier for somebody else to see it outside of their own. I know my writing is the same way. Uh, I try to, whenever possible, have somebody else read my own stuff just so that uh, I can get their perspective on it because we all like those darlings that we put in there and so it's hard not to, uh, it's hard to kill those when you, when you uh, write them in there. Everything seems wonderful and then when somebody points out that it's just not working right, you're like a little defensive about that, but that's okay. So that is the writing and editing. I am working, I'm going to be at a writer's conference uh, in April, so that's about two months away. And uh, I'm doing the New England, uh, New England Romance Writers Conference. And I've been there plenty of times before. <clears throat> um, so you'll hear that come up. Uh, as far as Hubby and I go, um, like I said, we are working towards a, a master plan. We're trying to put together a master plan of how we want to move forward. Um, right now, the, the housing market around here is so hot, but we're not in any place ready to sell. <clears throat> we will be eventually selling. Um, but um, not at this time. We've got some stuff, projects to do around here that we'll most likely be bringing people along, but um, as you'll, you'll probably hear some grumbling about that. But uh, for the most part, that's what we'll be doing. So that's about it for right now. Um, I'm sure I'll think of 50 other things that I wanted to say before I end this off. But really, I just want this to be a place where you can go, you can bring your knitting, you can sit there and while you're doing something else and just listen to it as you go along um, and enjoy yourself because I want it to be a relaxing place. Uh, if you have anything that you'd like to hear about, whether I know it's just the number one, number, number one episode, um, just let me know and uh, I'll, I'll see if it's something I can't provide. In the meantime, I want to thank you all. Uh, for if you're still here, thanks for listening. And uh, if you like what you heard, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to hear more, because there will be more coming, go ahead and hit the subscribe. And uh, till then, blessings from Maine. Bye-bye.